What is a buff dude's favorite style of art? Abstract. Welcome to the stream. Happy Friday, everybody. I hope your weekend has gotten off to a wonderful start, my friends. Thank you so much for uh, making the time to be here tonight with me. I really appreciate your company. Hope we're going to have a good time. I'm feeling good. Feeling lucky to be here with you. We've got a Master Tuesday first in chat just in time. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, Tuesday. Someday, Tuesday, I, I uh, well... I was going to say, Tuesday, someday I hope that you will get to experience the joy of a weekend, but... But I... But then, as I was preparing to say it, it started... It sounded like I was... It sounded like I'm, I was running the risk of insulting your favorite day. <laughs> so, my apologies. I was, cert I was definitely out of line. And Lucent Jelly, welcome in. Spicy cheese. Sometimes we're just so clever. <laughs> you did Tuesday. You did. You 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 beat Jelly by just a just a few seconds. It would seem. Melty cheese, not spicy cheese, melty cheese. Sorry, I gotta... Something in my eye. Eyelash or some dust or something. Alright. <laughs> Hello, title. Welcome in. Thank you for joining us. I have to say, I think you're, you're probably the first person to ever address me as... Frownsy poo. <laughs> uh, so uh, we've got uh, we've got Contra tonight, my friends. Um, we're gonna play Contra three. Um, I'm gonna play through it once. I want to say, I want to say, if I clear the game on my first try, we might clear it twice just because the the whole point of this is just to stay in practice with Contra 3. It's a game I've beaten a handful of times. I'm not super good at it. It's by no means guaranteed I'm going to make it to the end on any given run. Uh, the point of this is, is practice, just to slowly become better at it. Um, someday, I'd, I'd really like to be able to beat this game on hard mode, but... Uh, whew. It's so devastating, just on normal. So, we're going to play a little bit of Contra 3, and then we're going to switch over to uh, C, the Contra Adventure on the PlayStation. That's a game I've never beaten. We've played it a couple times, but uh, it's still technically my first playthrough, because I have not, I have yet to make it to the credits. There's a first for everything. Now embrace it. <laughs> Uh, like most things, I will uh, I will endeavor to accept it in stride. So uh, let's uh, let's jump right in. Let's start pressing some buttons. Contra Three is a game that has had to. Uh, this game has had to grow on me. Um, I played the first Contra for the very first time August before last, and that was like, I instantly loved that game. It was amazing. And I love Super C even more, I must say. Ah. Ah, 
Operation C on the Game Boy. That is also uh, pretty good. So I, I really like 8-bit Contra. This game, this game I've had to warm up to. I, I didn't really like it very much um, from the start. And I like it a bit more now, but I still really prefer 8-bit Contra. I really love this first level, but there's just like the 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 they they swung way too hard just into the direction of a uh, variety in this game um, is my biggest problem with it is like this is the only like standard contra level in a way every other level is like is gimmicked and it's not that variety is bad but it it kind of is when it comes to the exclusion of like what you love the series for right i love this uh, running gun platforming stuff like this is, you know, this is like 8-bit Contra just with a, with a, you know, with a, with a fancy new coat of paint. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I, that's what I signed up for. But there's no other stage that's really like this. Part of stage three is like this. And the last stage is kind of like this, but it's also a boss rush, so... And then the other stages, forget about it. They're all they're all gimmicked. gonna hit me or not wow the turtles really hanging in there this time usually the sea weapon takes this guy out rather quickly I don't know what's going on there we are goodness um i never ended up playing contra on the nes i ended up having to emulate it years later are you a con are you a contra fan <clears throat> i somehow missed out on it um i don't think i i don't think i ever played it until the first time we put it on on the stream um i know i never had it i never rented it it wasn't a game that, you know, I had, when I was young, I had a I had a cousin that I was real close with, and he had a ton of games, so I experienced a lot of games through my cousin. You'll you'll hear me say that all the time when we're talking about different sort of games. Um, basically, my cousin was my rental store. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he didn't have any of the Contra games, so I didn't experience them through him. I had a friend, I think one of my friend's older brothers might have had Contra. And we we might have tried, or Super C, and we might have tried it once. But I don't know if I actually played it or if I just watched someone play it and built a false memory. It's hard to say, but I never really played it. I never sat down to play it until we did it on the stream and it was amazing. I couldn't believe it. But the thing is, if I had played it as a kid, I would have hated it because I didn't like, uh, I didn't like really tough games as a kid at all. Uh, like Mega Man, I didn't like because it was too hard for me when I was real young.
Yeah, I want a laser. Thank you. <gasps> oh, run away from the bullets. But picking picking Contra up, uh, picking a Contra up as an adult, it was like fantastic. I just I just love it. I love the the action of it. It's so uh, acrobatic, it's fast paced, and brutally challenging. Hey, Mile High Roll. No, no Toads tonight. Um, I've been... On fr Fridays, I've been... Uh, I've been running out of steam early on Fridays lately for for whatever reason. And so, I didn't want to put Toads on the schedule and risk having to bump something else. Like I've kind of been doing. So, I, I did say if we beat... If we beat the Contra Adventure... Um, quickly and smoothly tonight I'm I'm probably gonna make a toads run at the end of the stream but no that it's not really officially planned there'll be there'll be toads there'll be toads everywhere on the stream next week though don't you don't you worry toads is not going anywhere we're just you know maybe taking one night off I don't know if you checked out. No, yeah, I was gonna say I didn't know if you checked out the VOD, but I was gonna say a lot of interesting things happened. A lot of interesting things happened to Dark Souls last night. I didn't want to spoil it for you. What a night! And thank you for the GG. Ah, oh, that's our first death. second death this uh this phase of this boss is nothing but uh garbage it's all it's just random where they're not whether or not you're gonna die i don't like it so we've had two deaths It really, it really happened, title. And kind of unexpectedly, I really... The uh, the attempt that went the distance there, I did not think was going to. Hey, Phantom Werewolf, thank you for joining us again. How am I? I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well. It's hard to have a bad time when you're playing Contra, right? I'm feeling good. I hope the same is true for you. I hope you've got a... I hope you've got a lot of fun things lined up for you over the weekend. This is a stage where my rust at this game was really showing when we, uh... Because we played it last Friday. It took me... I think it took me three attempts to beat it last Friday, The this game. Uh, uh. Mm, I want to say some things. Uh. Might take three attempts tonight. Oh, yeah, I have to... I'm not you'll you'll probably notice I am really bad at fighting this guy. Uh, 
my strategy for this guy is show up with a fire weapon, and I didn't do that, so... This is going to be an hour-long battle. If only I could hit him from above. That took forever. That took for forever. This game's got me shaking my head a lot. What'd you do differently? I didn't really do much differently. I uh, I leveled up a couple times. I I found some new items that were uh, that were slight improvements to my character, and that was about it. I just wailed on them and got lucky. Almost as annoying as real mosquitoes. I didn't find Mega Man too difficult when I was young, or that's what I'd like to say. A kid on my street had Mega Man 3, and I up buying Mega Man 4. It was probably uh, hard, but those rose-tinted goggles are ridiculous. So I think I started with Mega Man 1. Um, I feel like I rented all the Mega Man games over the course of my childhood, and I don't feel like I ever liked any of them. I... Uh, but I mean, after the first, like, after like one and two, the others were kind of poisoned because I kind of went into them knowing I wouldn't like them. And I don't know why I, I kept renting them if I, ne if I never liked them, but I really didn't. Um, I love Mega Man now, though. I've, uh, I've completely changed uh, on that re in that regard. Particularly Mega Man 1. I really like Mega Man 1. Um, I wouldn't say a fan per se. I played and enjoyed Contra 3 on the SNES when I was young. I played a bunch of NES and SNES games emulated through the years. Um, and that's the kind of stuff I grew up with. All right, well, uh, rip the, uh, rip the one CC. When I was on my quest to beat this for the first time, um, I I got a I got enough practice in to where I could make it to the last uh, I could make it to the last stage pretty reliably on a single credit. Sadly, that has left me behind. This is so much better. It's so much better with this fire weapon. Being able to just hide in the corner. And then these uh, mosquitoes here should be easier too. I love the fire weapon. The fire might be my favorite weapon. I don't know. The laser is really good, too. The, the C weapon is really good. I think the worst weapon in the game is the spread gun.
I don't really like the homing missiles either. <laughs> you like you like both the ones that I don't really like. Uh, they, uh, I feel like they they kind of nerfed the spread gun as compared to the NES games, and that's uh, <sighs> why. Uh... I don't agree with that death. He was behaving outside of his pattern. <clears throat> no worries. You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to 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 justify your opinions to me. <laughs> The laser's so strong. The laser's so Of course I have to defend myself. <laughs> Title said, mind you, this is me playing as a kid and not wanting to have to focus on aiming too much. <laughs> I mean, that's why I like... I, that's part of why I like the fire weapon is because you can just kind of flail around with the fire and uh, and defend yourself without having to really aim at a lot of enemies. Uh, aim at particular enemies. Oh, but yeah, the to be a, just a little bit more specific, perhaps I, the four kings um, in Dark Souls last night, I just wailed on them with my halberd. That's all I did. <laughs> nothing, nothing changed except I, I gained an extra level. I picked up and I picked up some cool. I, I gained a couple extra levels and I picked up some cool items. Um, I had a, I found a, a slightly stronger shield. I. Uh, I found a nice helmet. I can wear helmets again now. So I I found a nice helmet and I uh, I had a lot of uh, gold pine resin and a lot of green blossoms to uh improve my attack and my stamina for extra attacks. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I know how these guys are supposed to behave, and then when they when they when they deviate from my plan, it really really annoys me. I have no I have I have no egg. I uh, I found the uh, I found the the moldy acorn that removed my egg. I just found it randomly. I love it. I love it. I was just like everything else. I was I was just because I was so stuck at the four kings. I was like, well, we might as well just go adventuring around the map and try to level up. And while I was adventuring, I found the. I found the moldy acorn, and I'm free of the egg. I debated. I debated for a long while. I, I couldn't really decide whether or not I wanted to actually part with the egg, but I figured if I wanted it back, I could always, I could always try to go back down to the spider lair and get reinfected. I don't know. I don't. Re I don't really know how it works. So I like everything. Please, uh, you know, please nobody explain it to me. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm good with the mystery.
can't believe I died at that boss. It's also been years since I played Contra 3, so I probably have different favorite weapons now. Well, we're two credits. We've had to use two credits. <clears throat> Fashion souls. See, a lot of people had the exact uh, opposite opinion there. I, uh, I received so many compliments on the fashionableness of my egghead before I lost it. making several attempts at this tonight. <laughs> So I mentioned that uh, at, that at one point I was I was practiced enough to get to the last stage on a single credit. I could also get through the first three stages on a single life at one point. I had been saying, you know, if I if I ever beat this, if I ever beat this, it's going to be so easy to do a deathless run because I can already do half the game deathless, and then it just like. The boss rush at the end is so nasty <laughs> that I was like, well, s scratch that. <laughs> uh, and then I just kind of stopped playing it for a while. I kind of drifted away from it. Yeah, I miss the, uh, I really miss the ability to use, uh, I really miss the ability to use other, uh, helmets, and I was really happy, like, I was really happy to be able to put a helmet on, but uh, after the fact, because I've, I got this, I have this awesome, I have this awesome treasure chest helmet that gives me extra souls. And I think it increases item drops, too, because I was getting a lot of items while I wore it. The, uh, the treasure chest helmet is spectacular. And if I hadn't figured out, if I hadn't, if I hadn't found that acorn, I, I would, I would have missed out on the treasure chest helmet entirely. Uh, from the moment I found it, I was like, I wanted to wear it because it looks so ridiculous. And that's really all I care about. <laughs> Is that it looks so wild. But I was like, well, I'm never going to get to wear this. <laughs> so I was so happy when I, when, I, when I removed that egg that I got to wear helmets again. 
for the sole purpose of being able to wear it. Just because I thought, see, and that's the thing. I didn't even know that helmet had an effect. I just thought it was, I just wanted to, I just wanted to wear it because it looked silly. Like that was effect enough for me. If it just looked silly, I would have been happy. But then it had the most amazing effects. I mean, I know it kills me too while I'm wearing it, but that's all right. No, I think that was my fire, and I missed out on it. The spread gun, best weapon. <laughs> I should be using the spread gun. Oh, the chest head is so fun. It's amazing. If we get down to our last credit before the final stage, then we're in real trouble because I am, as, like, as much as I'm struggling with these other stages, I am, I am garbage at the final stage. Um, what other NES and SNES games did I play a lot in my youth? So I was a huge Mario fan. I've played all the Mario games a whole lot. Um, but let me just kind of think. Um, NES, games I had, because the games I had are the ones I played the most. I had Mario Brothers and Mario Brothers 3. I never had Mario Brothers 2 um, until, the, until I got the All-Stars for the Super Nintendo. So NES version, never never really played much. Um, I had Super Sprint. I have Bartman meets Radioactive Man. Um, that's about it, I think. I rented um, The Adventures of Lolo, and I think Lolo 2. I know I never played Lolo 3. But I think I played one and two through a rental. They were uh, me and my dad. We like to play those together. <clears throat> that might be that might be pretty close to it. Um, for NES games, I'm trying to think before I move on to SNES. Mario Brothers, Mario 3, Super Sprint, Bartman. I feel like there had to be a few more in there. I 
I'm sure. I know. I, I I'm I'm positive. I had more than four games. But I can't, I can't think of anything else. <clears throat> For Super NES, I had uh, Mario World, Mario All Stars, Donkey Kong Country, um, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, Ultraman Toward the Future, um, Yoshi's Island. Those are the, those are my sort of stand. Oh, and Super Super Ghouls and Ghosts. How do I forget? How do I forget to mention that? That's like, that's number one. <clears throat> it's it's so obvious. I leave it off the list. I think that's about it for SNES. Again, I probably had another game or two. I just can't think of them all at the moment. I have, you know, I have a I have a ton of games now. I didn't really have a ton of games as a kid. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry, my I keep clearing my throat. Hey, Zergling. Welcome in. Congrats on the Dark Souls victory. Thank you. Last night was amazing for Dark Souls. I feel really good. Lots of cool things. I found cool stuff. Cool stuff happened. I had, a, I had the best time with Dark Souls last night that I've had in a while. And it was kind of unexpected. I really... I really did not think I was going to... Uh, to be victorious last night. The attempt that won, I went into it fully expecting to fail. We probably had some 20 games for both consoles. Uh, do you mean you 20 total or 20 for each? <clears throat> Excuse me, because I'm I'm pretty sure I had about, about 10 per console, and I just, excuse me, cannot, uh, cannot think of them. Oh, I had Tecmo Bowl. I forgot about that. That's one I had as a kid. I don't really care for sports personally. I've never, never really been into any sport. But I did play, I did own and play Tecmo Bowl. Around 20 for each. Yeah, I had a I had a cousin who was about my age who had like I don't know, it seemed it seemed like thousands of games, but you know, he probably had like fifty games for for every console, but it, it you know it seemed like an endless supply to me. He might have had, more than think about it, he might have had closer to 100 games for each console. So I, I experienced a lot of games through my cousin. <clears throat> Lucky for, uh, luckily for me. I was talking to, I was talking about this before. Um, 
I don't know how well I expressed it, but there's an interesting sort of phenomenon with the, uh, I just completely fell apart there. That was horrible. Oh, thank goodness I have a continue. I have to redeem that. that it's like I was trying to die. That was so terrible. No one's ever played so badly on the stage as that right there. So there's a thing like with the good weapons in this game. There's a there's a phenomenon where like I would, I, I, you start off where you're like, where you're like, oh, this is a really good weapon. I better, I better not use it because if I die, I'll lose it. I need to save it. So I, I can't use the good weapons because I need to save them. And then as you start to get better at the game, it starts to be more like, oh, this is a really good weapon. I just need to use it all the time and I'll never die. <laughs> and so it's kind of interesting. Like if you, as, as you, when you get a little better at the game, you. Your attitude towards the weapon use completely reverses. At least, you know, that was my ex ex experience. When I, when I used to be okay at this game a long time ago. I want to be, I want to be that frowny again. The frowny who's brave enough to use the weapons. I envy that guy. Where did he go? It was so good to be him, and it's so bad to be me. Uh, hey, Loyal, welcome in. I hope you've got a good weekend ahead of you. Uh, day is good for me. Had breakfast for dinner. That's the way to do it. Um, you know, I had some stuff today. Um, Jelly and I had some doctor's appointments. And, uh, we went out for lunch. Uh, went to the, uh, went to Olive Garden. One of my, uh, one of my uncles gave us a, uh, a gift card for Christmas. So we had a... Uh, we had lunch at Olive Garden today. It was pretty nice. They've got this soup there, uh, Supa Toscana, that I, uh, that I really like. I make my own version of it. I like my version better, but <clears throat> it's nice to have it's nice to have someone else make it for me. <laughs> I was never much of a sports fan either. Uh, still enjoyed track and field and NES tennis. Um, way too much, despite that. I enjoyed Mario Tennis on the Virtual Boy. I played a lot of Mario Tennis. I can't recommend the game, right? Because the Virtual Boy is kind of a nightmare. But I did, I did personally get countless hours of enjoyment out of out of Mario Tennis. Your inputs here have to be so precise because you have to be pushing up when you jump and then you have to push over to cling back onto the side and it's really it's really frustrating how th this whole section I just th I this is the, e the the worst part of the game Ridley is terrible 
the boss is too hard and it's not fun to play because it, you have to be clung to that wall. It's so aggravating. Ugh. And I just lost the run. Oh, Contra 3, why are you like this? If only I had the spread gun and homing missiles. <laughs> if only. Uh, Loyal says, I love the Olive Garden, the salad and the breadsticks all day. I love the breadsticks. I don't eat the salad because it's, uh, because I'm, you know, I'm me. I'm scared of, I'm scared of so many foods. I can't handle all those, uh, I can't handle all the ingredients, so I have to pass on the salad. But the breadsticks, the soup, I had a, uh. I had uh, salmon as my uh, my main dish, and that was uh, that was really delicious. Jelly had raviolis and. She had like, I don't know, half of them in a to-go box. And then uh, she ended up accidentally leaving the box behind at the restaurant. So uh, F's, F's in chat for Jelly's ravioli. Nothing wrong with avoiding rabbit food. I mean salad frowny. Yeah. I'm a fan of the uh, the old salad isn't food, it's what food eats. So you're that one human being that actually owned a virtual boy. I missed that before. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't catch that one. Um, yeah, I, uh, we we got the virtual boy. My mom bought the virtual boy as like a like a to the whole family Christmas present, but it ended up just being mine. <laughs> I played, so I had a uh, Mario Tennis came with it, I think, because I had that. I had Galactic Pinball, uh, Mario Clash, and Red Alarm are the four games. I think that I think those are the only games I had. And yeah, I mean, I played a lot of each of them. I probably played Galactic Pinball more than anything else. I really liked uh, Galactic Pinball. Um, but Mario Tennis, yeah, uh, that that's probably number two. Uh, uh, Mario Mario Clash, uh, third place, um, you know, mostly because I got it later than the others. And Red Alarm, Red Alarm is terrible. I wanted to like Red Alarm so much. I tried to I tried to convince myself it was good, but it's always been terrible. Is the is the, is the, 
is the the <laughs> my is the virtual boy what started your your suffering fetish? Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a mix of things. So I I I I claim that the the origin story it actually goes further back because I've always loved super ghouls and ghosts. I didn't always love hard games. In fact, I really didn't like hard games as a kid. Super Ghouls and Ghosts was a weird exception where, I don't know, the, the art style of the game or something, something about it just really captivated me. And I kind of liked it right away. And uh, it was a game like, I, uh, the circumstances I got it under um, were a little bit, were a little bit unusual for me. Because like I usually only got games I usually only got games that, um, uh, like I would get a game at on at Christmas maybe and one on my birthday maybe, um, and that would that usually be about it. I might get one, I might get one other one throughout the year, or I might get two if a if an an aunt or an uncle gave me one on a on a Christmas or birthday in addition to my parents. But generally, you know, it was a somewhere between maybe two to four games a year I would get. Um, but Super Ghouls and Ghosts, I spent the night at my cousin's house one night and he had just gotten it and we spent the whole time playing it and never even did very good because it, it is like it is. But we spent the whole night playing it and the next day when my dad picked me up, I don't even remember him playing it or us really talking about it, but as he was driving me, as he was driving us home, he stopped randomly at at Walmart on the on our way home and he bought the game for me just as a random as a random gift so I, I don't know man I don't know why because uh, I didn't I didn't get spontaneous games <laughs> like that but he got it for me and we uh, you know I, we played it together a, a ton throughout my childhood and never beat it because it's a disaster of a uh, of a uh, difficulty but uh i did finally beat it i finally beat that like i don't know like 10 or so years ago and then i was like well i i, I finally beat super ghouls and ghosts time to beat ghosts and goblins and so i beat that one and i beat castlevania and just i don't know i was like just like wow i can I can I can beat some hard games if I stick to it. So it's it sort of sort of grew my my love for really hard games sort of grew through those 3. But I really I really attribute the way I play games now, like the way I play them on the stream with all of my like you know my 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 crazy no spoilers policies and and like doing everything <laughs> the hardest way possible and stuff like that um is sort of a combination of the experiences i had with breath of the wild and kirby's dreamland 2 <laughs> those are the those are the two games that made me a, a real monster <laughs> Breath of the Wild because I went into that game knowing absolutely nothing about it and uh, was rewarded with a with a with a just tremendously magical time and uh, Kirby's Dreamland 2 because I went into it expecting a cakewalk and what I received was a torture chamber but I struggled all the way through it despite the tremendous suffering and, uh, you know, that Breath of the Wild taught me, like, the joys of, uh, the joy of no spoilers. And Kirby convinced me that I can beat any game without help if I'm willing to suffer long enough. So those, those two games made me a monster. <laughs> those two games made me not, not just a guy who likes to play hard games, but... 
uh, but who likes to give himself every disadvantage possible. <sighs> Sorry, I see there's another question there, but I gotta... You're gonna have to give me a moment to get to it. I got a boss situation going on. I want to use the laser. See, look, I was about to say I want to use the laser to fight this guy, but I'm scared to lose it. There's that that early like I can't use the good weapon because uh, there's that mentality, right? It's not like the I should use the laser. It will get this boss fight over with quicker. That's see, that's the way I should be operating, but I'm not. I'm not in that place right now. I. Uh, I, I I've rusted too much at this game. I think I'm safe to stand here a moment. Sounds amazing to me. I wish I had some uh, something cool like that. Uh, what other consoles and games did you end up playing, uh, through in your youth? Um, so it was, so Commodore 64 is where I started with games. My dad had a Commodore and so I, my first, I say the first game I ever played was Ghostbusters, which is probably true on the Commodore 64. It was that or Donkey Kong. I don't actually have a memory of the first time I ever played a game. I started, you know, really too young to form memories. Um, but it was probably Ghostbusters or Donkey Kong. I played a lot of those when I was young. And we had a few others. Uh, Dino Eggs. That's currently my favorite C64 game is Dino Eggs. Um, uh, Jumpman Jr., Spy vs. Spy. Um, Pac-Man... Uh, there's probably others in there. I just it's hard to you know it's hard to think without the thing without things in front of you. Um, we had an Atari 2600 for a while. I don't remember any of the games, so I, it did make an impression on me. I guess I don't know. Um, I remember it was one of those like one of those with the wood grain sticker on it, and I remember we had the paddle controllers, but I don't remember a single game. Um, then, uh, then it was all Nintendo stuff. NES, Super NES, Game Boy, N64, all the way up to the GameCube. Um, Game Boy, we had Tetris, we had Burger Time, I had the amazing Spider-Man, Pokemon Blue. Uh, Pokemon Pinball on the Game Boy Color. I played a Game & Watch Gallery 2 and 3 on the Game Boy Color a lot. I had the Game Boy Advance with uh, Castlevania Circle of the Moon. I played that a lot. And Harvest Moon. On the Game Boy Advance, Harvest Moon was the king of the Game Boy Advance for me. Uh, Friends of Mineral Town. Oh boy. I sunk a lifetime into that game. GameCube, I played uh, the Star Wars game, the Rogue Rogue Squadron 2, Luigi's Mansion, uh, Smash Melee, and Mario Sunshine, and Wind Waker are, I think, most of what I played on the uh, GameCube. A few other things. I wasn't, I wasn't avoiding using the laser out of fear. I was not using the laser because I forgot I had it. This guy doesn't seem to be very weak to the laser. It's not, it's not taking him out quickly. 
I wonder if the enemies have. I wonder if the enemies have different levels of weakness to different weapons. I wouldn't expect that, but the laser really didn't seem to affect this guy. And it ruins the turtle, so that might be the case. Ghost and Goblin's final boss didn't seem so bad after Super uh, after Super Eagles and Ghosts. Oh no, no. Ghost uh uh Ghost and Goblins is way Ghosts and Goblins is way easier than Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Way, way. If you're uh, if you're playing them both, you know, legit and true ending. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, like, Ghosts and Goblins is harder than Super Ghouls and Ghosts uh, for like a, on like a moment to moment basis. I think Super Ghouls and Ghosts is easier. Um, when we're just talking about getting through the levels. But the thing is, I can't really judge them fairly. Because I grew up with one and I didn't grow up with the other. So, so really, when we're talking about the levels, you have to, my, my position is going to be skewed by that. But I feel like the levels in Super Ghouls and Ghosts are mostly a lot easier than uh, Ghosts and Goblins. But it doesn't matter, because the final challenge of of Super Ghouls and Ghosts is so much harder than anything in Ghosts and Goblins that it's all... It's all a moot point. No, the rest of the game doesn't matter at all when you have when you have that final boss in Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Sorry, I don't try to I try to read and play at the same time a lot, but I'm gonna pause here. Those are some gold C64 games. Yeah, when it comes to the C64, I don't think I had the lot the same experience as a lot of other people because a lot of people I talked to played a lot more like um, sort of adventure type games on the C64 or like things that are almost like point and click type games. And all the games that I remember playing were really arcade, uh, had a real arcade style philosophy to them. So. Because there are a lot of there are a lot of C sixty four games that are more exploratory uh, type games, but uh, I thought the music wasn't playing. I, I I just you probably can't hear it on your end, but the music does actually play on the pause screen. It's just super quiet. Uh, I heard a few notes of it there out of nowhere. No good titles. I, I I'm I'm sorry. I'm not sure for what. I need to get a GameCube. Pokemon Blue is the best. Pokemon Blue uh, will have my heart forever. My girl loves Harvest Moon on the SNES. Loyal says, I haven't I haven't been able to play that one. I feel like it would probably be difficult, um, because it would be more stripped down than Friends of Mineral Town. I tried playing, we did Harvest Moon 64 a little bit on the stream, but we didn't stick with it for very long, um, sadly. I would have liked for that to have gone on better, uh, gone along better. I think the NES Ghosts and Goblins is harder overall, but the final area in Super Ghouls and Ghosts with the bracelet requirement is outrageously difficult to the point of Super Ghouls and Ghosts being harder based on that one level alone. Yep, dead zergling, I'm right there with you. Right there with you. We had an Amiga 500. I never played a single adventure game on it. Uh, you can't hear it on your end. All right, cool, cool. I know, uh, you know... I keep I keep the volume pretty low around here. That's partially it's partially out of choice by choice and partially out of necessity. I keep the game volume pretty low. People comment on that from time to time um, because I don't want to struggle with talking over it. Um, 
the overall volume is pretty low because it because it's the only way to get the it's the only way I've found to get the microphone to avoid like picking up every little noise like you know like my breathing or when I'm shifting around and stuff like that like the microphone is really sensitive if I don't keep if I don't keep certain volume sliders really low Like I've got it, I've, I've got it set up so that like a lot of those noises are supposed to be gated out, but I don't know that it does. I'm not an audio engineer. <laughs> I really, I really want my audio to, to to sound to sound good, or at least not sound bad, but. I got limited abilities. Ah, oh, the, the 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 basically all the missiles were gone at the same time. I don't know if I don't know if there was a way to really survive that. I guess if I if I were up a little higher and or jumped a little later. That felt very unlucky either way. Even if it was survivable, it was unlucky. All right. Ooh, that boss uh, sounds sounds clean. Thank you, loyal. If you're playing legit GNG for the NES, third loop is definitely even harder. Have you been watching my my old vods, Zergling? <laughs> So it's the new New Year's Eve. The new my New Year's Eve tradition on the stream is I play Ghosts and Goblins on the NES, and I try to do Loop Three. I've never I've never succeeded. <laughs> we've only we've tried twice. I haven't been doing the stream all that long. We've but for for two years for for two years in a row, New Year's Eve, I've done a Ghosts and Goblins, and I've attempted to clear Loop Three. And I, I I can't do it. I make it to the last stage, but the last stage crushes me. Ugh. Both times I was there for hours. So I just had to I just had to give up. I, I ran out of I ran out of strength. Uh, loop four is nearly impossible, even non-legit. It's just undoable. Yeah. I, so I got the idea to try it. Because uh, when I was scrolling through the streams randomly, someone was on loop five of Ghosts and Goblins, but I mean they were they were abusing save states. So but I thought, oh, that's I said I thought, oh, that looks fun. That that looks absolutely terrible. That's that's my kind of fun. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do extra loops and I can't clear the third one. But that's alright. Maybe this year. Maybe this year will be my year. Third third time's the charm, right? You know, hopefully hopefully I'll still be streaming and we'll do a we'll do another Ghost of Goblin stream and I'll try it again. I still need to play. I have a, I have a more arcade accurate port of uh, Ghosts and Goblins on the uh, PlayStation Two, and I've never, I've never tried playing it. So I, uh, that's something I need to, I need to do on the stream some night. I think that'll be a fun adventure. Though I have to say, while the while the NES Ghosts and Goblins isn't like super strictly arcade accurate, you know, in its sort of style and physics, 
I like it. I think I like it. I think I like it better than the uh, arcade version. I like the the look of it anyway. I know it looks m more primitive, but I don't know. Maybe that's why it appeals to me. Goblin House on level two is a whole new difficulty loop in in loop three. It is. Oh. I mean it, the the go, the goblin house is uh, is is t terrible on you know it's terrible on the first loop. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a it's a bad place to find yourself. So yeah, on loop three. So much worse. All right, I've been kind of rushing through this area. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna. Well, if I get the fire weapon, I might speed up. But I'm gonna try and go through here a little more slowly and a little more cautiously this time. A lot of the... <sighs> really? I didn't even know that guy was uh, down there. He was off the screen. That spread gun item was my worst enemy there because all I wanted to do was, was back away a little bit and it was right where I wanted to stand. that laser. Ah, I didn't want to lose that laser. <sighs> Spread gun equals best gun is going to become some kind of meme on here soon enough. Oh. <laughs> I do tend to keep talking about it rather unflatteringly and that that, that sort of thing does tend to generate memes. <laughs> I will say I don't think I really have a like a solid like approach to the uh, to the the goblin house in Ghosts and Goblins. I just kind of uh, I don't have a like a set plan of attack that I follow every time. I just kind of do whatever um it is a it is a, the rare example of a game where i use sort of a like a like a speedrunner type trick sometimes because i do i do sometimes use the bird the bird jump to to exit the goblin house from the roof I don't tend to normally use tricks like that. Um, usually I don't know about them. <laughs> um, but that one I know about. And uh, and a lot of times, even if I know about them, I don't use them because they feel like cheating. That, that bird jump, though, I'm willing to... Like, I think that that one is a good trick, like, so far as still being fair, because it costs you in order to do it like you 
you ha <clears throat> you have to uh, you have to play well enough to keep your armor into well. Oh, there is a backup armor nearby, so never mind that. Um, though you do have to walk over there. So anyway, you have to get there with your armor to even be able to do it, um, which is a good requirement. But then also it costs you your armor to do it. And so because it costs so dearly, I kind of think it's fair to take advantage of that trick. Damage boosting is pretty term tame in terms of glitch ab abuse, though. Yeah, um, well, especially when it's so so hefty as you know, like half your, uh, you know, half your life. I don't think you're really getting away with much. But I don't. I don't always use it. It just. I. I kind of just. I got to go back and forth. Um. Because the real. <sighs> In a lot of ways, the real enemy of stage two is the timer anyway, so. You're, uh... You are kind of cheating the level. You are kind of cheating the level from that perspective. If you use a, if you use a clip, if you use a trick that saves you time. Because the biggest thing that kills me on that level, I feel like, is the timer running out. Though I don't really think that level time limits are a very legitimate obstacle. So, I don't know. I could argue with myself. I could argue with myself for weeks and still not be sure. What my... And still not have a firm opinion. Um... Is this the SNES? This is the SNES loyal. This is a port? A port of what? This was this an arcade game? This is first playable on an arcade system? I did not know that. Uh I don't know, I've never played any of the Quake games. You get a really nice jump, but you tend to lose most of your health in the process. Yeah, I think that, that that's probably probably fair then. And I mean, it also kind of depends on your on on how much of a level it skips. So you, I would have to weigh in, you know, because if it skips ninety percent of the level at the cost of half your health, it's like, well, uh, I think you I think you're still probably getting the better end of the deal. Hey, Derek Ocean, welcome in. Happy uh, Friday to you, my friend. I'm I'm struggling with Ridley. I love how Konami just liked Ridley so much that they just they just stole him. Someone at Konami, they played they played Metroid and they and they were like, Oh, I love that character. I'm just gonna use him. And they put him in Castlevania the Adventure, and they put him in this game. I'm sure I'm sure if I looked around I'd find Ridley in other Konami games too. Technically, though, it's still an S-NES as the arcade machine. 
is the Super Nintendo system. So they so someone so someone built a cabinet to play the so someone built a, a cabinet to play the Super Nintendo game. So there's not really any porting going on there. I think that happened. I think that might have happened in some areas with the um, with Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Because that one, the, the first two games in that series started as arcade games and were ported to consoles. But Super Ghouls and Ghosts was made as a Super Nintendo game. But I think that, that there may actually exist uh, an arcade cabinet that just is the Super Nintendo game. Ghouls are free, welcome in. Contra 3 is not a port. There is no arcade game. It might be the other way. It might be the other way around. Like I was saying, where they built an arcade out of the... Out of the, the Contra game. Like Loyal was saying. VR, good to see you. How's it going? I mean, I'm still... VR, things are going pretty well. I'm struggling with this game. I'm having a hard time, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm I'm actually I'm still kinda riding high from last night's Dark Souls victory and the good battle toads run, so uh, While this game is frustrating me. It's hard for my spirits to be really down. No, I didn't beat Dark Souls. I beat I beat another boss in Dark Souls. Loyal. I beat one more boss. Is it blasphemous around here to say Mode 7 or whatever the SS called it didn't age well? Uh, Mode 7... Uh... Mode seven is I'm mixed on mode seven. I'm not a I'm not a huge mode seven fan. Uh I I don't like it a lot of times, but it can be okay. I mean like I still like I still like Mario Kart and that's like mode seven the game. I guess F Zero is mode seven the game. But I haven't really played that. I beat the four kings. I did. I did. I finally beat them. Feels nice to have that behind me. I was falling asleep when you got the egg off your head. Uh, that's a that's an even bigger victory. In some ways. <laughs> I don't know, I'm mixed. I was really attached to that egg. Or it was really attached to me. <laughs> Depends on how you approach them. You've never found the boss hard. I mean... I find everything in Dark Souls hard, so... <laughs> the egg is gone. I found, uh... I, because I was stuck at the Four Kings for so long, I was just kind of wandering through the game and just doing other stuff to kind of farm souls and just look around for, I don't know, whatever I might find that could help me. And I uh, I killed a, killed a snake and a moldy acorn fell out and it cured me of the egg. We've been waiting like a hundred hours for this moment. I'll have to check the VOD. Pilot <laughs> uh. Wings is also kind of mode seven the game. Pilot, yeah, the, it is. I I know that. I haven't actually played that one though either. 
Um, So yeah, I would say mode mode seven is not my favorite aesthetic, um, but I feel like it, it can it can do good things. I don't know what that is, Zergling. Yeah, I appreciate it. Vague, vague is the way to go. Vague is the way to go. You did well. Uh, mode 7 is nice as an accent, I think, Ghoul says. Cool. Didn't want that. Oh. <clears throat> So I, I have beaten this game before. I've, I've beaten this game a handful of times. I'm just... I'm playing it... I'm, I'm picking it up here again lately because I never really got good at this game. I got... I was... I got to where I was able to, to be... to be pretty good at it. Um, I could clear the first three stages on a single life and I could make it here on a single credit, typically. Um, was as good as I got. But uh, I'm definitely very rusty. I mean, I've never, I've never been good at this boss rush. I need a lot of practice here. We had the far superior blast processing. <laughs> Whenever I see Mode 7, I feel glad I went from NES to Genesis. Uh... Meaning like the way it's used in Super Ghouls and Ghosts or Castlevania 4. Yeah, that's see, that's the thing is I was I was kinda I, I was kinda hedging there because like basically because I know I, I recognize Mode Seven when I when I see it as a landscape in a game, which is one of the ways they really heavily use it in Super Nintendo games. But I know that like it's also used for effects, like for like um, oh, I guess the um, would the uh, in Super Ghouls and Ghosts the inside the demon stomach stage stage 4b where you ride the piece of cherry cobbler through the land of blueberries is that uh is that mode 7 that does that because that looks pretty good yeah okay yeah 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 then definitely yeah that that stage looks all right if you don't get motion sickness from it <laughs> Mode 7 to me was like water levels for the NES. Uh, 
How did Battletoads go, Derek asks? I did Battletoads. We had three runs. The first run of Battletoads, the game glitched real heavily. But I kept playing it anyway, and I had an amazing run. I made it all the way to stage 10 on a single credit. And at the very start of stage 10, the game crashed. And I lost everything. <laughs> kind of my fault, right? I I I I was playing I was I knew I was playing with, with the game like it had a lot of visual glitches so I knew it, I knew it could happen I played anyway you know play stupid games win stupid prizes that kind of thing I certainly did then uh so I did another run and it was even better I made it I made it to stage 10 again, single, uh, single credit. I was doing great. I cleared stage 10 in a single life. Didn't even die. Beautiful stage 10. Got right before the boss room. The platform that's supposed to drop didn't drop. I was soft locked. 100% the game's fault. I was, I was so furious. I've never been treated so badly. Run three. Not as good as run two, but I did make it all the way to stage 11. Again, single credit. And then I and then I lost everything on stage 11 because it's hard and I don't understand it yet. But uh, overall, Battletoads, three three really good runs. I'm getting I'm getting pretty good at the you know the parts of the game that I've been through. Just gotta, just gotta figure out how to play stage eleven now. I uh, can't forget the silly spin around you, boss from level three. That was mode seven. Oh yeah, yeah. That looks. That's uh, that's a little worse. Um, that looks a little worse, particularly when he's coming in and out of the arena. I mean, it's, it looks as good as it could, but uh, I will say, like, it gets pretty, they get, those are some pretty chunky pixels. I don't know what to do. I don't know why that's not working for me. That's always been my approach. Use the bomb and use the fire, and you're not supposed to die. But I died. Very annoying boss fight. That boss was a joke in Super C. He isn't so funny in Contra 3 now, is he? Um, yeah, you know what? I never even... It never even occurred to me that that's the same boss from stage six in Super C, you're right. Yeah, I mean that isn't the easiest boss in Super C, but it but it's it is super easy. The la the last boss in Super C is probably the easiest one, right? Well, what are the bosses? The helicopter, the uh the tank, the The wall with the four things on it, the laser shower, the skull ship, the Contra 3 boss, the guy with the purple drips. Yeah, I, he, he's one of the easiest bosses in Super C, definitely. One of the one of the probably second easiest. I don't know, I don't know if you there's a the stage three boss is pretty easy. I I just discovered recently. If you I never knew b before, but if you know if you I found I just recently found that if you stand in the exact right place, you don't really have to move at all for that boss. Kind of like, kind of like the one in the other one. All right. Yeah, yeah, not the easiest. It's, that's the thing with Contra is like, 
contra bosses tend to be pretty easy um this game this game fixed that the bosses in this game i mean some the you know the the throwback bosses are pretty are pretty uh yeah are, are are still pushovers but uh The, uh, yeah, the bosses are pretty hard in this. Contra is the same way on the NES, both the Contra games on the NES. That's the, that's the weakest part of the game is the, the bosses are just, are laughably easy for the most part. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. You're right. All right, so we're going to... I've got this uh, soda here. And we're going to try it out. I've never seen this before. Sometimes I, I, if I find an interesting uh, drink, an interesting cola, I, I like to try them on the stream. And uh, that's what we have tonight. I've never seen this before tonight. It is Dr. Pepper, Strawberries, and Cream. I don't know if anyone else has had this before yet. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out and see if it's any good. Um, I like... Um, there's, a, there's a Dr. Pepper cream soda. And I like that a lot. Um, so I have high hopes for this, but we'll see. We'll see. We're going to try it together now. You're a fan. Uh, I don't know if you're a, a VR, I don't know if you're a fan of the Dr. Pepper or if you're a fan of the bacon soda that Zergling's asking about. And no, I've never had bacon soda. I did have one of those, um, uh, Jones jones soda company they made a uh they made a holiday dinner uh sodas it's like a pack of five or six sodas they made two versions of them i think at least two versions but the one that i tried it had a turkey and dressing soda brussels sprout soda uh i think it had cranberry one of them was like cranberry and like a pumpkin pie i don't know it had it had five or six sodas in it i probably got photos of them somewhere i should see if i could find them um but there was one year there was one year um when i was in college uh jelly and i we weren't going home for thanksgiving so my mom uh sent us a gift she sent us a uh she sent us a box of those Jones sodas so we would have a Thanksgiving dinner even though we weren't going home. <laughs> and we tried them and they were putrid. They were putrid. Uh, like, I think the cranberry one was probably all right, but every other one of them was undrinkable. It was a horrific experience. And keep in mind, on top of that, I'm an I'm an extraordinarily picky eater to begin with. So this smells really good, by the way. This soda, I haven't tasted it yet. I think I can smell. I think I can smell strawberry. It might be my imagination, but I think I smell strawberry. It's very sweet. It is very sweet. That is really good. I like it. I like it. It tastes like a... Um, it tastes like a snack cake. It tastes like... there. It definitely has a strawberry taste to it. I think if you got a... I think if, if you got a Twinkie, it tastes like a Twinkie with, with uh, strawberries.
Yeah, that's very good. I like that. <clears throat> uh, probably if you gave this to me, if you didn't tell me it was supposed to be a Dr. Pepper, I wouldn't really taste that. I think the Dr. Pepper flavor is what's reading to me, like the cake part of the of the equation. You know, rather than the cream or the strawberries. When I say it tastes kind of like a Twinkie. Um, but I think if you had given this to me in a glass and didn't tell me that Dr. Pepper was part of the equation, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. My sister liked it too, Derek says. Um, does it taste like purified high fructose corn syrup with a bit of flavoring? That's what it tastes like, Zergling. And it's delicious. Um, I got strawberry shortcake little Debbie rolls here. Makes me want one. It would be a very similar flavor experience to this, I do believe. Um, I got one for a friend as a joke, uh, told him to, he told, he, he told me to surprise him with what I got him, so I surprised him, he made me try some too, it was amazingly disgusting, I was spitting in the sink for a long time, <laughs> yeah, based on my, based on my experience with a turkey and gravy soda, I'm not terribly surprised. The Dr. Pepper is a good one, of course, VR. Well, I wasn't sure, VR, you know. If you don't, if you, if you don't see, you know, <laughs> even if you do, the order of the question there made it a, in, a, up for interpretation what you meant. <laughs> I used to find celery soda at the grocery store. Wasn't bad, actually. I can't say that I've had that. I am, uh, I wish I liked celery. Celery, I really like the smell of celery. Like when I'm in the gro I think it's the celery. When I'm in the grocery store and I'm by the vegetable aisle, and I can kind of smell the celery, I'm like, ooh, that smells so refreshing. It, it seems like it would be a real treat to eat, but I don't like the taste of celery. I haven't been able to adapt to it. We have some Dr. Pepper strawberry in the fridge now, Derek says. Wonderful. You are uh, you are lucky indeed. It's good stuff. I like it. Um so yeah, my mom got us those uh those Thanksgiving sodas. And the thing is, I've got another memory of a gift from my mom. <laughs> that Here's the thing. So one time, it was around Christmas time, I was also in college, I was home, and I was sitting in the living room with my mom, and I was like, you know, just kind of chatting with her and making conversation, and I saw there was a, you know, there's like a present nearby with my name on it, and I was like, ooh. I said, that's a, that's a, that's a big, that's a big box. Someone, someone got a nice gift for me. I wonder what it is. You know, not really fishing for hints, but just kind of being playful. And, uh, so I, 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 you know, I, I asked her, I was asking her a couple, like, questions about it, um, like, almost like a 20 questions kind of thing, but I asked her, for some reason, I, uh, I ended up asking her whether or not it was something drink that I could, that I could drink, um, I guess because I had deduced that there was, that there was a liquid component to whatever the gift was, so I, so I asked her, could I drink it? And she thought for a moment, and she said, I suppose you could, but if I were you, I would be, I would want to be sitting outside a hospital when I did it. <laughs> and in my memory, and in my memory, my wires cross in my brain, and I always kind of, I always feel like I remember that, as if she were talking about the, the Thanksgiving dinner sodas. Because they were such, they turned out to be such a nasty, horrifying experience that I think wanting to sit out, wanting to be sitting in front of a hospital when you drink them is not unreasonable. 
<laughs> so I always imagined she was talking about that, even though this is a memory, this is a different memory, and the gift that that turned out to be was a lava lamp. <laughs> Which I suppose technically is drinkable. Drinking a lava lamp would probably go better than a bank than a bacon soda. <laughs> uh, if I ever get the opportunity, if I ever come across a bacon soda, I will I will certainly uh, purchase it and have and uh, and and drink it on the stream. It's. <laughs> It's so amusing because like we have this uh we have this sort of tradition I guess of of me finding food and drink like new food and drink products and trying them on the stream like I mean we do it like once or twice a month But the thing is I'm such a picky eater and like I never so I never eat anything and then whenever I try these things I never have the vocabulary to describe what they taste like so This one went really well, but all of my, like, taste tests are usually an exercise in futility. <laughs> because I'm unable to say anything meaningful about what it tastes like. Could have been a strawberry cream-flavored lava lamp, but that would be a cruel trick. That that death at the turtle boss was unfortunate because it was it felt pretty unavoidable. I mean, I guess if I'd played differently from the start, but once I was once I was in the situation, there wasn't really any way to escape. That second death that happened just now, 100% my fault and bad bad gameplay all day long. That was that was me being terrible. Do you have a, a puke or panic bucket for when the taste tests go wrong? Well, I've never had anything that I've really expected to be super disgusting. I do have a trash can right next to me. Um, if I needed to spit something out, I could, I could do that. Um... I don't think that I'm likely, like... I'm pretty good at holding back, like, my... disgust reflexes or whatever. Because, like, I used to eat those, uh... those, uh... bean-boozled beans on the stream, and some of those are... pretty horrifically disgusting. And they'd make me, you know, like, gag a bit, but... I don't think I've ever been in danger of actually vomiting. You know, I was I was always able to choke those down. I don't really do those anymore. I kind of got tired of them. They don't do enough. I wish they did more flavors. I was playing Little Hope tonight. Another talk game you would hate. Ugh. I've never even I've never even heard of that one before.
But yes. Movies disguised as video games do not... You know, movies or books disguised as video games do not really uh, grab my attention. How exotic do you get? Probably disappointing. Probably, probably not as extravagant as you may may be imagining. I don't want to mislead you. Like I, I, you know, I'm I'm just talking about. I like, grab new sort of products that I find sort of commonly at the grocery store. <laughs> like if Mountain Dew introduces a new flavor or something like that, I try it out. I haven't been, like, scouring the earth for weird things to sample. Just to, just if I see something new, if I stumble across something new at the store and it, and it catches my eye. <clears throat> yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, we'll... I would like to say maybe we, uh, maybe I'll, I'll I'll up my game in that regard at some point, but again, like I don't have the I don't have a, a a meaningful power of vocabulary when it comes to a when it comes to describing food. I'm a I'm pretty woefully ill-equipped. Do you have a cow tongue with horse radish level extravagant? <laughs> no, I don't even think I've ever eaten horse radish. And I've certainly never eaten cow tongue. No, it's mostly just flavor, just mostly drinks and snack foods that look that look new and just different. Because I'm gonna try, I'm gonna. There are things like I figure I'm gonna try it anyway. Might as well just try it when I've got some friends around, right? So we just do it on the stream. I had a cow tongue taco from a taco truck once. Got stuck in my teeth. I was driving, so I couldn't get it out for like 20 minutes. <laughs> so basically, I can say I made out with a cow for 20 minutes. <laughs> oh my. I think bacon soda would go good with bacon ice cream. You make a bacon float. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty picky eater, and like I tend to, you know, I, I tend to not have a lot of variety, but I do try to be adventurous in trying new things when they're presented to me. Basically, like, the thing is, I'll kind of try anything once, but once I know I don't like something. I'm not. I'm really not up for trying it ever again. And if I'm presented with a new thing that is contaminated by something, by having on top of it or inside of it something I already know I don't like, that I'm, I'm not, I'm not usually, I'm not up for trying things I know I don't like in new contexts. <laughs> Uh, the cow tongue is actually ridiculously tender, though. Like a really nice roast.
I'm not a picky eater, but but a cow sounds gross. <laughs> Derek says. I think he means specifically the tongue, right? Yeah. I don't know. I would. I would try it. I would try it if, uh, if given the opportunity. I have. It's never been uh, presented to me, so. So I have not gotten around to it. The, the flamethrower definitely trivializes that boss for sure for sure I think that I don't know if this is the case or not I'm trying to I'm gonna try and pay attention to it as I play and see if I can figure it out but I think that it might be the cha the case that bosses that certain bosses are a little bit weaker to certain weapons because like I know the laser can really ruin um, one of the bosses, but the laser felt, like, terrible against, uh, the robot just a moment ago, and so I'm thinking that that, I'm thinking that there might be a chance that that robot is, is especially weak to the flamethrower. I don't know. I don't know any enemies. I don't, I don't think I've ever tried the flamethrower on an enemy and had them, uh, stand up against it really well though so it, it might be it might be that the flamethrower just wrecks everything i certainly like it i certainly like the flamethrower <laughs> It's bad for this boss that's coming up now, though. So, let's get a laser on standby. I keep forgetting that this mini-boss exists. He's killed me so many times here recently just because I forget that he's gonna come down. Travel into my flame and perish quickly. Or slowly. <sighs> probably, the tongue probably stays tender because cows don't talk very much. <laughs> So I laid down to take a nap earlier, and I got distracted, and I feel really like, uh... Feels really narcissistic, but I got, a. Uh, I got distracted when I was laying down because I, uh... I got distracted watching clips of, from the stream. Watching clips from my own stream. <laughs> when I was gonna take a nap. Um... But, uh... I just uh, oh, just felt like I felt like I should probably uh, you know say thank you because I really I really appreciate how many people have made uh, have made clips of things that uh, have amused them on the stream <laughs> because going through going through them and watching them earlier today was 
yeah, there was there was some fun there were some fun memories there there were some things uh, a lot of a lot of them I just I completely forgot <laughs> or just never thought about and so it was a it was a good time to uh, to relive some of those. <laughs> Uh, nothing wrong with enjoying your own brand. Okay, oh, that fireball coming for me at the end there. Well, I don't, I don't really use the fire. Let's see how, let's see how the fire works against this guy. This is the guy that I, that I know is like super weak to the laser. So let's see how the fire does. Fire's pretty good too, so yeah. I think my I think my theory about uh, bosses potentially having weaknesses I think that theory is flawed. I think that was a I think that was a bad hypothesis. I've had times where watching a friend's attempts at a game made me so mad that. Uh, that I either had to go play the game myself or watch recordings of myself playing said game. <sighs> watching, uh, watching other people play games uh, in general tends to make me want to play them regardless of how well or poorly they do. <laughs> But, uh, 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 my goodness. my train of thought i imagine you have a lot of i imagine you that uh you'll have a lot of opportunity to feel motivated to play a lot of the games that go on around here That's literally why I started playing Dark Souls because my friend was terrible at it. <laughs> Uh, 
I didn't handle that well on the one hand, but I do feel like it was a rather unfortunate <laughs> pattern, too. So I will accept 87% of the blame for that failure. I think the thing that's the worst about if this if Ridley didn't have a tail I would not hate this fight so much but he's got this random tail that even when you avoid him I don't know how to deal with his tail and it's super annoying I did never know, I, I didn't know how to fight Ridley with the machine gun until um, last week, I think, when I, which was the first time I picked this up again after we hadn't played it for a few months. We played it last Friday, and even with all the, uh, with all the runs that I did last year, I, uh, I never figured out how to attack him with the machine gun in this phase until until last week. <clears throat> jumping jumping up the wall is just horrible. This is... I'm not confident. Uh, okay, that's okay. It won't give me any extra lives, but I shouldn't die? I'm dead. I've never learned how to avoid this. <sighs> From the top. Well, this is, this is, uh, did I even try? Nope. Cosine sign patterns of doom. <laughs> Is that what cosine and sine look like? I haven't, uh, I haven't done math in over a decade. <laughs>
well over. I'm on to you, sir. You're trying to make me play Contra 3. <laughs> Please do. the needle there. Never got too far in the past. Only level 2, I think. Uh, despite really liking Contra and Super C. Yeah, I see, that's the thing. I love Contra and Super C. Like, they are, they are some of my favorites. Um, I can easily say, this game has really have, had to grow on me. And I would say I like this game, but I don't love it. I'm just gonna let that go. I'm gonna use a different weapon. I'm gonna try using the laser, see how this works. As I should be able to kill this head on the left hand side. I've been able, in the past, I've been able to take it out before it has a chance to come down and ruin me like it's been doing. So I don't know. Clearly, I'm doing something wrong. And I really should have picked up that fire. tape back. That, that alien should have been dead. Contra 1, I actually beat on the first night when we played that. Um, I think it took like six hours to get a successful run. But it was the first time I ever played it, and I actually beat it on the first night. Super C took two nights. I think I could have done Super C on in one night. Um, but I, if I remember right, I did another game first, and so I, I just... The stream went on for real long, and I got too tired. So I, it took two nights for Super C. Um, and then Contra 3 here took like five or six nights. I think the first night I made it to level uh, 3. And the second night I made it to level 4. And then... And then I had a lot of nights where I could make it here, but I couldn't beat it. Kind of like tonight. <clears throat> that brain doesn't mess around. Sure, sure does not. It's unfair. It's unfair. That face shouldn't even exist. I don't have a brain, so why does the boss get to have one?
I guess you could say it minds its business, Tuesday says. I'll give it to you. It it doesn't make a great deal of sense, but I'll give it to you Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your your brain your brain is uh, looks is le less smooth the more knowledgeable it is, right? That's the uh... I don't know what you call that, like uh... the legend. So that uh, that that brain is is quite wise and knowledgeable. My brain. My brain is finely polished. It's like a like a bowling alley in my brain. No no friction. A bowling lane. <laughs> the brain boss really lobes its job. Come on, two bombs. Oh, thank goodness. I kept uh, I kept getting uh, burned by uh even when I had the fire weapon that uh That uh, one on the left, if I had the fire weapon, I'd be shooting at it. And then the old thing where the enemy projectiles go behind your fire. Ooh. It's the worst. Alright, really focus, Frowny. This is the one to do it. Ball there just missed me. Uh, I don't remember what this one's like. Oh, it's like this. It's all right. Oh, thank goodness. Reward myself with some delicious strawberry drink.
can't tell if Frowny is apologizing to us or himself. Uh, your help would have been nicer. Would have been nice earlier, Mister Helicopter with a giant cruise missile. Uh, this game makes my hand hurt. <laughs> All right, press the start key. We did it. We beat it. Let's uh, we'll play hard mode until we game over. It won't take very long. But just for the extra practice, let's uh, let's uh, let's do a, let's do a run here at hard mode, and then we'll move on to the next game. It's really the thing is the thing about level one, and I can't really say the thing about a lot of the other levels because I haven't played them, is the guys that are kneeling, the like sniper guys that are just kneeling and waiting for you, they always manage to fire at least one bullet. And frequently they manage to fire several of them. So pretty much I am like I'm pretty much guaranteed to lose a life at every point where they come on screen. Even when I know where they are, I can't seem to take them out faster than they can get me get to me Ooh. and usually I just don't even have a good idea of when they're coming up hard mode in this game is just no joke I don't think it loops infinitely um, I think it only loops if you play it on normal and it just does one extra loop to put you onto hard mode. Because apparently you have to beat it on hard difficulty to get the true ending. Which is a little bogus. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would want to beat it on hard difficulty, even if it, even if it gave you the true ending on normal. I would want to beat it on hard just to do it. <laughs> I do want to beat it on hard, but ugh. If I were, if I were married to Ridley, we would need a lot of couples counseling. What these the bullets from the from the heart don't have an even spacing. Sometimes it fires them real far apart and sometimes it fires them real close together. Double kill. I'm 
Turtle 2.0 seems uh, a lot more brutal. He might give Gamera a run for his money. Uh, hey, Greg, welcome in. Hope you're doing well tonight. Happy weekend to you, my friend. Yeah, they didn't. Uh, they didn't care that it's not Metroid. Greg, they they saw Ridley. They liked him, Konami, and they said we're just gonna put him in all of our games. Hey, Dartomic. Welcome to the stream. They randomized the spacing to make it to make it harder. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure it's intentional. That doesn't mean I have to that doesn't mean I have to like it. <laughs> I'll take I'll take any opportunity to cry that I that I can. Yeah, the bullets are, yeah, the bullets, the timing for the bullets is definitely randomized because two of those just shot so close together. There's no way a pattern is involved. Ooh. I do think that it's I do think that it's right and fair to lock a player out of a true ending if they lower the difficulty from the default. You know, if the game start if the game has like three difficulty levels and it's on normal by default, then I think it's fair to take away the true ending from players who lower it to easy as a way to incentivize getting them to beat it on the developers recommended difficulty which is what the default should be I don't think that the true ending should be locked behind an optional hard mode though because I think that I think the hard mode should be there I think the reward that beating a game on hard mode should be the reward in and of itself a, a player that uh, a player that's going to play a game on hard mode is going to do it anyway, so. I don't know, I don't like the move of, uh, I don't like the move of locking, of locking it behind the, an, an extra optional mode. Like that. I think that's, that's bad. Bad practice. Understand this level on hard mode. It, all right. Never mind. I do. I do understand it.
<sighs> I try not to. You know, you may notice I don't use bombs very often. I try, in general, I just try not to use them. I feel... I don't know. I feel like they're a rather cheap solution to a lot of problems. And I, you know, I, I will use them on occasion when I'm, uh, when I'm in a particularly nasty situation. But, uh, as a general rule, I would rather not lean on them. I love these overhead levels. I never knew you could duck under the shots. Yeah, yeah. I don't... Uh, that's another thing. I don't really use that. Um, very often. Um, I tend to forget that I can do it. The overhead levels, I'm not as big a fan of. <laughs> They're probably my least they're probably my least favorite level type. But uh I guess that's conscious strength then. It's got something for everyone. Uh Greg says I'm fine. Good to hear. Uh success in making it harder. They certainly did. They certainly did. I agree. I think that's in response to my uh my thing about true endings. How I wish Streets of Rage 3 thought this way. Keep, I keep hitting him. I really hope a professional Contra 3 player finds this VOD someday. <laughs> and they see and they see my strategy for this guy. <laughs> that's definitely gonna make that's definitely gonna make someone roll their eyes someday. <laughs> I have a strategy to, now though. I've never had a strategy for for the for those guys that refuse to open. I know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to walk in a circle around them like that. So that's a uh, that is honest to goodness the way that I'm going to to approach those from now on. But he's behaving differently. He's mad. He's mad. I figured out what to do. Now he's mad. He's just going berserk. Well. All right. Now this guy is the cowardly one. I, I see what they did. They just traded strategies. 
Oh, this one's so much worse, though, for this guy to be the coward. Is so much worse. This guy's also going to be a coward then because there's always two there's always two cowards. No, I don't like this. Oh, I'm going to have to go the opposite direction. Okay. No, he won't wake up if I go the opposite direction. I got a I have no I Oh, this guy's just don't shoot. All right, easy, easy. Come on, how much health do you have? I forgot this boss has lasers. <laughs> ah, I thought that was my last life. Am I out of continues now? Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I've never been so happy to be out of continues. <laughs> I get to stop. <laughs> I get to stop playing it. Oh, it's so brutal. It's so brutal. Contra 3 on hard mode is the is maybe the hardest retro game that I that I have yet to in, that I've encountered so far I can't I I really don't know if I can think of anything more difficult But we're done with that for tonight, my friends. We're going to move over to the PlayStation. You think the Genesis one might be harder? I haven't played that one yet. We're going to do that one after I do after I finish the PlayStation one. Um, we're going to do the Genesis one. Uh, not tonight, but... You know, after I after I beat the PlayStation, uh, the uh, Contra Adventure on the play, there are two on the PlayStation. We're doing the Contra Adventure. After I beat that one, then I'm gonna put Hardcore on the schedule at some point, and we'll see how that one goes. But uh, yeah, uh, PlayStation Contra. My disc for the PlayStation Contra, I gotta let you know, is uh, in very bad condition. The game plays, but it is very susceptible to strange and interesting glitches i uh the music gives out s the levels disappear sometimes the random sprites and polygons are 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 no shows it has soft locked on me before so it it, it could play completely normal it could play completely normal or it could be a horrifically broken experience. We could get, we could get anything. So, there's your heads up about that. Hey Sparrow, welcome in. You're here right uh, as we are uh, about to change games. I think I'm gonna take a quick BRB.
I don't know if you uh I don't know if you guys have this down in a uh, Australia Sparrow, but I tried for the first time uh just a little while ago uh Dr Pepper strawberries and cream. Since uh, if I remember correctly, you're a tremendous Dr Pepper fan. It is very good. It is very good. I wouldn't be able to tell you um, how much does it taste like cough medicine. That's the thing. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd be able to tell you that Dr Pepper was part of this equation when I drank it. It just. It has a. It tastes like a. To me, it tastes like a like a Twinkie and strawberries. If you had like. If you had like a Twinkie with some strawberries on it, it would taste very similar to this. I think the. Uh, I think the Dr. Pepperness is what is made is what is reading as like the cake part of the flavor to me. But like you you definitely taste the vanilla cream, you definitely taste the strawberry. It even smells. I even smell strawberries. It's very sweet. If you don't like uh like you, you got to be ready for it's a really sweet cola. It's good. It's good. Makes a fantastic dessert. Don't think we've got it here, but I've been steering clear of the Dr. Pepper as my life is already very full of sugary things. All right, my friends. Uh, like I said, a quick BRB and then a more Contra. We'll see how uh, we'll see how the PlayStation treats us. I'll be right back with you in a couple minutes.